What actually is a logarithm? Hello, my name is Tim Rusciutti. I'm an algebra teacher, and right now I'm working on logarithms with my students. And so I wanna talk through what actually is a logarithm, what do we do with them, why do we need them? I wanna tackle this from two angles. First of all, I wanna think of the logarithm as an operation. That is, we can think of the logarithm the same way we think of addition, or multiplication, or division. But then I also wanna think about the logarithm as a function. What does it mean to take a particular input and give an output as a logarithm? Let's start first with how we even say it. So usually the logarithm is going to have this little number next to L-O-G and then this bigger number after that. And the way that we say this is we're taking a logarithm base A of B. The result of that process we're going to call X and we'll bring this back in a little bit. But again, the way that you say this is logarithm base A of B is X. If I wanted to take something like the logarithm base two of 32, and I wanted to think of this as an operation, that is, I wanna think of it as some action I can do with these two numbers, what's the question that I'm answering? Division, you'll recall, answers this question. When we write something like 32 divided by two, we'll often say, how many times does two go into 32? And you probably already know that answer is 16. But when we say that, what we mean is that if you added a two to itself 16 times, you would get back 32. We're going to treat a logarithm similarly. We're going to ask how many times does two go into 32? But for the logarithm, we're not asking how many twos would we need to add to itself to get a 32. Instead, we're asking how many times would you need to multiply a two by itself to give you back 32. So again, instead of adding two plus two plus two plus two 16 times and getting back 32, we wanna think two times two is four, times two makes eight, times two makes 16, times two again makes 32. How many times did I need to do that? five times, and it's in that sense that we can say the log base two of 32 is five. So similarly, imagine that I wanted to take the log base eight of 64. I'm asking how many times does the eight go into 64? But not in the sense of how many eights do I need to add together to make 64, but how many eights do I need to multiply together to make 64? Eight times eight makes 64, and so it took two eights multiplied together to make that 64, and therefore log base eight of 64 is two. Now, if you don't know anything about logarithms, you're probably thinking, cool, that's nice, that's interesting. If you do know anything about logarithms, you're probably wondering, why wasn't this the way that they were introduced to me? We can do this by hand. We can do this the same way that we do division or do subtraction. And the answer is yes, as long as we're playing with nice powers, the way that 64 is a nice power of eight or 32 is a nice power of two, this does work really well. But of course, not all powers are so nice. So you could also easily imagine a question like log base five of one over 25. What are we supposed to do now? You can't multiply a five times itself some number of times to get 1 25th as a result. But there is still a way that will keep this relatively simple. Let's take a second look at some of these problems. When we say log base two of 32 is five, what we're actually saying is that if you raise two to the power of five, you get back 32 as a result. That's what it means to multiply a two by itself over and over again. Similarly, it's eight to the second power that makes 64. So in fact, what we're seeing is that the logarithm is really just a different way to write an exponential expression. In fact, we can put this in general form. That log base A of B is X. That's actually just another way of writing that A to the X power is equal to B. This is the more familiar exponential exponential form of the expression, but this form here is the equivalent logarithmic form of the expression. And so importantly, if I can write the exponential expression, I can also write the logarithmic expression and vice versa. For example here, let's imagine calling this answer x. Log base five of one over 25 is some number that we don't know, but we're going to figure out right now. What we're actually saying is that there is some power of five, that's the thing that we're interested in, that is equal to 1 25th. Now, 25 has a pretty obvious connection to 
25, 5 to the second power is 25. What I need to remember right now is that reciprocals like 1 over 25 come from negative exponents. What's actually happening here is it's 5 to the negative second that makes the reciprocal 1 over 25, and it's in that sense that log base 5 of 1 over 25 is negative 2. So although we're leaving a little bit that question, how many times do I multiply a 5 by itself to get some particular result, we're actually gaining a little bit in that we now have a deeper understanding of what the logarithm is. The logarithm is the exponent. In an operational sense, what the logarithm is going to give you back is the exponent you have to raise a certain base to in order to get that result that you want, the thing we were taking the logarithm of. So this can even help us in weird scenarios like if we're taking the log base nine of three. Again, you can't multiply a nine by itself some number of times to get back three, but you can express three as a power of nine. What we're really saying here is nine Nine raised to some power, again, for convenience, let's call it x, is equal to three. And you probably know there's a connection between nine and three. Nine is actually the square of three. Or if you prefer, three is the square root of nine. And there is a way to express roots, square roots, cube roots, etc., using exponents. Fractional exponents are another way to write roots. And so nine to the one half power is the same thing as the square root of nine, and of course we know the square root of nine is three. And so when we take log base nine of three, and we're really asking nine to what power equals three, the answer is the fraction one half. So this is the operational way that we can think about a logarithm. We're answering a question similarly to how division might answer a question. The question just happens to be, how many times do we multiply that base by itself to give us back the thing we're taking the logarithm of? And even when we end up in weird scenarios where we wouldn't necessarily multiply that base by itself some number of times to get a result like one over 25, or beginning from nine to get a result like three, we can use this exponential equivalence to the logarithm in order to recover that information and calculate the logarithm. Nevertheless, we wouldn't usually calculate logarithms by hand, and so this is where the functional understanding of the logarithm becomes a little bit more helpful. When I say we wouldn't usually calculate logarithms by hand, let's consider another scenario. Let's say that what we wanted was something like log base 2 of 20. Again, we could think through this, okay, how many times do I need to multiply 2 by itself to give me 20? Well, if I multiply 2 times 2, that's 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 again gets me to 32, I end up with a problem. Neither of those last two numbers was 20. I guess in some sense I must be multiplying a 2 by itself more than four times, because two to the fourth was 16, but fewer than five times, because two to the fifth was too big. Two to the fifth is 32. I might try the move that we looked at earlier. Let's say that this is equal to some x, and then let's express this exponentially. Two to the x power is equal to 20, but unlike the scenarios earlier with the reciprocals of a certain power or with roots, there's not a nice power of two right now that gets me back 20. 20 is not a power of two in that sense. It's not a whole number power of two. It's not an integer power of two. It's not even a rational power of two. But we can still do something with this two to the x. Let's take this two to the x into the coordinate plane. That is, let's look at the exponential function, two to the x power. Now, of course, one thing we can do with this is we can evaluate various points along the exponential curve. This particular function contains a point like 3 comma 8 because 2 to the third power is 8. In fact, of course, we can move up and down along the curve and we can see a bunch of different nice powers of two. But what we've already said is two to the x equals 20 is not one of those nice powers of two. If we zoom out just a little bit though, we can see 20. That is, we can see a y value of 20 and we can see it definitely does intersect this exponential curve. We can even get our graphing calculator platform to tell us where that intersection occurs. Just like we were thinking, we need a value that was more 
more than four, but less than five. What Desmos is telling us right now is that at roughly 4.32 and then a bunch more decimal places, we get a power of two that does in fact give us back 20. And so first of all, we can go ahead and say what this logarithm is. Because it is the roughly 4.32 power of two that gives us back 20, it must be the case that log base two of 20 is roughly 4.32. But let's think about what's really going on here. When we flip back and forth between this exponential form and this logarithmic form, the base of course stays a base the entire time. You might notice we've been using that word in both the logarithmic form and the exponential form. But then what was our input for the exponential function, the exponent roughly 4.32 that we raised to 2 to get back 20, in our logarithmic form, it switches places. The 4.32 becomes the output to the logarithmic operation. And the 20, what was the output over here for the exponential curve, becomes the input to the logarithm. There is, of course, a name for this, for a thing that we get when we flip inputs and outputs. Consider a bunch of different ordered pairs along the exponential curve. If we just flip all of the x and y values, what that ends up looking like is a transformation across this line y equals x. As we switch those x and y coordinates, it looks like we're just reflecting or mirroring all of the points across that line. This new set of points takes everything that was an output from the exponential function and now uses it as an input to the logarithmic function instead. And of course, everything that was the input on the exponential function is now an output on the logarithmic function. This is what we call an inverse. When we switch x x and y coordinates, which in the coordinate plane looks like reflecting those ordered pairs across the line y equals x, we end up with an inverse function. And so that's what the logarithm is. It is inverting the exponential function. Everything that was an output on the exponential function, the power of some certain base, now becomes the input to the logarithmic function. We want to be able to answer the question, when we raise two to a certain power, when is it going to give us back a result of 20? The log the logarithm gives us the operation we need to be able to answer that question. And the logarithmic function is going to now treat that as an input and return to us as an output what the exponent needed to be to get that result. And so this fundamentally is what the logarithm is doing. It is inverting the exponential operation the same way that division is inverting multiplication or subtraction is inverting addition. In fact, one really nice thing about the exponential curve and the logarithmic curve is these functions are one to one, meaning it's not just the case that like for all functions, any given input on the exponential curve matches with just one output. It's also the case that every single output matches back to only one input. This means for any particular output on the exponential curve, you can always trace it back to one specific input. You don't end up with a multi-value situation the way that we sometimes do with, for example, the square root, where most of the time we just take the square root to be the positive root, the square root of 16 is four, and we just kind of ignore the fact that also sometimes it's negative four, because of course it's true, four squared is 16 and negative four squared is 16. Nothing like that happens with the exponential function and the logarithmic function. If two raised to some power is eight, there's only one possible answer to what that power is. And so I can confidently take the logarithm base two of eight, and I know for sure I'm gonna get back three. Three is the only exponent I can raise to two to get back a result of eight. Now, I will say I've probably cheated a little bit in thinking through the logarithm as an operation. Sure, Desmos can tell us that log base two of 20 is roughly 4.32, but how would we ever come up with that information on our own? And the answer for the most part is we wouldn't. We don't normally compute logarithms by hand. Even when they were invented roughly 500, no. Even when they were invented roughly 400 years ago, it wasn't normally the case that just everybody computed a logarithm by hand. There was one guy that computed a bunch of different logarithms and then people used that as a list. There 
there were literally books published just full of logarithms that you would then use for your calculations. Because based on the fact that a logarithm is an exponent, it tends to obey exponential rules. That is, if I have a log of some product, a times b, well remember in exponents, what happens when we multiply exponential expressions is we actually add their exponents. And since a logarithm is an exponent, the same thing applies. The log of a times b is the same thing as the log of a plus the log of b. This was the original thing that logarithms were really good at. They took complicated operations like multiplication and turned it into a simple operation like addition. And as you might imagine, the same is true if you divided instead. Log of A divided by B is the same thing as log A minus log B. In the same way that when we raise a power to a power, we multiply the logarithm of a to the b power is actually just the product, b times log a. The reason that the logarithm obeys these properties is because the logarithm is an exponent. I hope that's been helpful for you. That is how I think about logarithms, both as an operation and as a function. If there's something I missed here or something you have a question about, throw it down in the comments, and otherwise I will see y'all next time.